What's it uh, like, Dallas, to have this uh, entire group here with you right from the beginning of training camp? You should get prepared for the 13th. Well, it's good. It's, be, it's uh, great to be back in the arena, number one. Uh, as short as our summer was for the Toronto Marlies, it, it's always, uh, it seems long when, you, when you're not in the rink every day. So we're excited to be back. Uh, I'm excited to get the guys first. Um, you know, usually it's uh, the NHL guys get all their stuff done, their fitness testing done. Uh, we make the first round of cuts and you get 12 or 15 guys and you start with a small, small group and it's really challenging to, to get practice done. So right off the bat, I get to try out some stuff that uh, I believe in testing wise um, and I have a big group to work with right away. Dallas, will it be difficult at all to motivate some of the guys who, uh, who thought they'd be at an NHL camp this fall? Well, I don't think so. Uh, listen, the, we're going to have a, a, a great battles uh, on at forward, D, all of our positions, goaltending, on who's going to get the minutes. We, we've got great depth here. Uh, the second part is, is uh, you know, when's the lockout going to end? Uh, you better be uh, right at the top of the list with your play if you want to get a chance to go uh, show yourself when the lockout ends. Um, and lastly, you're being watched every every night here. Uh, there is not a night where one of uh, my bosses are not upstairs watching these players, and our guys know that. So if you're going to come into camp unmotivated, I'm going to drop you down to the bottom of the list. Your ice time will be cut, and it will be impossible for you to get a shot. How much of an impact do you think having the NHL, some NHL players on all the AHL teams will have? I mean, do you think the, the quality of the hockey will go up even another level? This year. Well, how can it not? Uh, you know, every team has uh, added more skill, more speed, and usually more size. Um, so the, the, what, what those players are going to do is they're going to pull the rest of the group with them. And uh, usually those players are, are, are special guys. They, they've been the, uh, the best players on their teams coming up through junior. They've established themselves in the NHL and uh, they just lead naturally. So uh, I don't see many of those players falling back in the pace. I, I see them pulling the group uh, with them. Two games make it difficult, Dallas, to make decisions here given the, the limited amount of time you've got? Well, it, it you know, you'd like more games. Um, but uh, hey, that's the challenge we're up against. We will uh, scrimmage a couple times uh, with this group. Um, and what happens with the player now is uh, practice just isn't practice. Uh, you're being watched every, every second. So uh, it's going to be real important for uh, our guys who haven't uh, established themselves yet to um, have great practices, show what they can do in the scrimmages, have uh, a good showing uh, in one or two of the exhibition games, and uh, try to squeeze one of these other guys out of a spot. Where did Marco William put himself after, after your last year? He had an, obviously an excellent season. Well, he opened up our, our eyes that, uh, you know, he, he could do some things in the net. Uh, for me, he doesn't have the body of work uh, to, you know, us to tell him, hey, get a place, you're here. Um, but uh, his numbers uh, certainly were very good uh, coming in. Um, and we've had some great success here over the years with our goalies being in the East Coast League, coming to the American League, and uh, the one thing with Mark, he, he may be uh, our hardest working player on our team. Uh, this guy is a workhorse. He he's, seems to be at the rink forever, and um, if I was uh, one of the other goalies, I'd be a little nervous about that. What kind of goal do you set for this team after what you're able to accomplish last year? Is it almost, you know, we've got to repeat that level of success and maybe even further? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, last year in training camp, we looked at our, uh, when training camp was over, we looked at our roster. Um, I didn't want to uh, keep anything from the players. I walked in and said to them, listen, uh, I've played in this league before. I've coached in it. Uh, our managers have been around. This team can win the championship. The Dallas team and team. just to finish. Uh, so that will be the same message. We, we basically have the same group back. Uh, we ended up number two in the league, so we will try to get number one. Hey Dallas, just to let you know, you're live on CB24 right now. How does it feel just getting all the more fan attention now with the NHL lockout? Well, I think we're getting a little used to it. Uh, with uh, us being the only uh, professional game in town uh, last year in the playoffs, uh, I thought the, the city rallied behind us. Our building was sold out uh, on most nights. 
and it looks like it's going to be like that uh, early on in October here, which is a uh, you know a rarity for an American League team to to come out of the gate with their uh, building filled. So, listen, I know there's no NHL hockey, but there is certainly hockey in Toronto. Is it uh, more attention from Leaf management right now? You think, or is it pretty much the same? No, it's the same. Uh, listen, we, our guys, uh, they're on it. They're, they're on top of what's going on with the NHL team all the time uh, because we're here in the same city, in the same practice facility. Uh, they jump from side to side. So, uh, you know, our, our guys are always on both teams. And um, But I, I know they're, they're excited that, hey, our team's in Toronto and, and they're not traveling to, to go see our team play. Do you get more input from the team coaches or do they let, leave you alone to do your thing as usual? Yeah, none at all. I, I've sat down with uh, Randy Carlisle. We've uh, added uh, Chris Dennis, one of the, the assistant uh, coach, video coach for the Leafs, uh, to our staff uh, right now. But uh, we've sat down, go, gone over what kind of system stuff Randy's going to uh, implement, and uh, I will teach that uh, immediately with our group. Now, Dallas, you, I'm talking to the fans in the city. How big an opportunity is it for the Marlies organization to really grab people's attention this fall? Well, we want to continue on uh, grabbing their attention as we did last year in the playoffs. Um, but uh, it's like I said to uh, our business guys, this opportunity may never come again. Uh, hopefully in the future, the NHL uh, and, and the players will uh, all get along and there won't be any more work stoppages. So in a market like Toronto, you want to take this opportunity, try to get people excited about your product and, and stay with you. So. Um, we're looking to, to uh, grab as much attention uh, on the ice by doing the right things uh, as we can. Is it the sold-out barn would obviously help to motivate the players? Well, yeah, and that's going to happen early. I already know early on here that our arena is going to be sold out, and, and I love when uh, I get talking to somebody and they said, oh, I'll come by and grab a ticket and see your team play, and I love to tell them that, hey, that's not going to be happening. You might want to look to the uh, early November to get your ticket. Dallas, you talk about trying to, you know, maybe not having to fight to keep the guys motivated, knowing that they're being watched every night. But do you think at some point, if this thing starts to linger, that inevitably it's going to be hanging over their heads, wondering when is this going to get done? Is it going to get done? And do you, are you concerned that it might affect their play here? Well, I, I, I fully expect uh, them all to be watching, wondering when it'll get done. There, uh, listen, they, they all want to make it there. Uh, they're fans of the game, uh, so they're going to read the, the stuff like you and I do every day. And, but for it to affect them on the ice, I don't think so because these guys are, listen, as much as it's about the individual here getting to the NHL to fulfill his dream, these guys are wired and they don't even know it. They've been wired since they were little kids that as soon as they step on the ice, it's never been about the individual. It's always been about the team. So whether they were playing in the street in front of their uh, house, if they're in the backyard on the rink, if they were with their minor team, their junior team, their NHL team that they've been sent down from, it's always been about the team winning. And when that uh, puck drops uh, at any game, uh, all that individual stuff uh, goes right out the window. Was there a trait about last year's team that you want to replicate with this year's group that you want to take you want them to take that characteristic and have it again well we had a number of great characteristics last year you know our team was extremely uh, resilient uh, they were committed um, and the biggest thing for me is uh, they were respected we had great great young men and I don't mean anything about hockey I mean guys that uh, they, they, they see a lady crossing the street with two kids and a bag full of groceries and they stop and they help her they, they open up doors for uh, for elderly people, they 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 go to schools uh, preaching the right way to, to live your life. Those are the type of people we want in our, our organization. We have them here now, and I want great hockey players. I want guys that go on to succeed in the NHL, but I want guys that are, are good men, good husbands, uh, good fathers walking out the door uh, when they're all done with the Toronto Marlins. On, on. Being excited about being able to do some of your own testing, and what sort of things do you do differently, maybe? Than has been done at the NHL? Well, we're going to do uh, uh, some, you know, different uh, threaded bike tests. Uh, we are going to do two on ice tests. Uh, uh, the two on ice tests will be tomorrow. Uh, they will firmly challenge the players on where they're at early with their conditioning. Um, you will see immediately who the fittest players are and who maybe had a very nice summer. Um, 
these tests are, are something, like I said, we're going to try them. They might work out great. It's uh, something that uh, I believe in and hopefully something that I'll be able to carry on long into my future with the testing. And then again, you know what? They might suck. We might not get the data that we want and we might have to tweak them. So uh, listen, I, I'm going to try it. I'm never going to fall into this uh, uh, old adage thinking, you know, uh, hey, this is the only way you test hockey players. I'm always looking for new ways to do it. I think hockey players are sprinters and there's a, uh, a level in endurance that's needed too. And I'm trying to find that direct line, uh, where, where that line falls in the middle of endurance and sprinter and uh, train our guys correctly. Dallas, 175 goals against. Is defensive accountability in all three zones woven into the fabric of where this team should be even before you step on the ice Saturday? Well, absolutely. Hey, listen, I, I'm, I love pressure. Our team plays aggressive. I want to score goals, but I firmly know that if the other team doesn't score, we're going to win the game. So uh, that's how we'll go about it. Uh, defense to me is a, a commitment. It's, uh, it's not like, hey, uh, Phil Kessel can go out and score 40 goals. That's great. Um, we don't go ask uh, Colt Nor to score 40 goals as well. Mm -hmm. To me, everybody can play defense, and it's a, a commitment to that. It's a team commitment. It's a commitment to the guy sitting next to you. Our guys bought in last year, but we will never, ever fall back and, and, and play some 1-4 uh, system like that. We'll be aggressive like we are in our penalty kill, penalty kill all the time. It looks like Randy Carlisle uh, uh, believes the same, and uh, we will play uh, an entertain entertaining uh, style of hockey, which our players love to play. You touched on this before, but goaltending was such a huge thing last year. Do you think you'll find the same magic in whatever in whoever emerges as one or one or one A or whatever? Well, I, well, I hope so. You know, Ben had a great season last year, and I, I hope he can uh, take another step. Um, yeah, I think he can uh, still even be better, uh, even after the excellent season he had. Uh, UC had a tough year last year, missing uh, training camp, which always is usually a negative for a player. They re re rarely have a good season after you miss training camp. You know, Marco Williams got his foot in the door. Uh, so, yeah, I, I hope there's a battle. I, I hope those guys push Scrivens for his minutes, and I hope Scrivens pulls away from them as well. Um, but it's... Uh, it's that old Harry Neal adage, uh, you show me a great coach and I'll show you a great goalie. Do you feel more pressure on yourself, uh, you know, having a higher, higher level of play in the game, more attention this year? I don't know if I ever feel pressure. I think pressure is when you're uh, sitting in a foxhole in Baghdad or somewhere and you're trying to save the guy's life next to you. That's pressure. I, um, uh, I feel committed to the group as much as I was last year. My my goals are are for this team to win, and my goals are for this uh, for these individuals to get better and hopefully go on to play in the NHL. Uh, and those are the only two goals I I have for myself.